Which of the following points can be precisely marked on a cephalogram? A cephalogram is a radiograph that is used to carry out certain analysis and to carry these analysis out we utilize certain landmarks. Okay, so there are certain landmarks which are going to be marked on the cephalogram, especially the lateral cephalogram, which are used for quantitative measurements and analysis. These measurements and analysis helps us in diagnosis as well as treatment planning. So now these landmarks which are used, they can be of various types. They can be anatomical landmarks. Okay, these are representation of actual anatomical structures on the radiograph. For example, the nasion the posterior nasal spine, the anterior nasal spine, etc. Okay? And there are certain structures or certain landmarks which are not anatomical, rather they are derived, meaning they are arbitrarily obtained secondarily from anatomical structures. Example of this would be the nathion. Okay? So the nathion is not actually an anatomical point, it is the midpoint between the pogonion and the menton. So, such derived landmarks may be the nathion, the articulaire, the point PTM, etc. Okay, so between the anatomical and the derived landmarks, the anatomical landmarks can be uh, marked more precisely because you can see them on the radiograph representing the anatomical structure, whereas the derived landmarks will be obtained arbitrarily and secondarily. They can also be classified as unilateral landmarks and bilateral landmarks. Now unilateral landmarks are those landmarks or those structures which appear along the midline and are one in number or single in number such as the nasion, the menton, the pogonion. These are all unilateral structures which are present along the midline. Now bilateral structures or bilateral landmarks are those which are uh, going to superimpose on each other. So for example the porion okay that is the opening of the external auditory meatus now there are there are two porions that are going to be present in each patient right but the lateral cephalogram is only a one dimensional representation of a three dimensional structure so whatever structures are two in number okay on the lateral cephalogram they are all going to superimpose they're going to superimpose so this superimposition of bilateral structures sometimes makes it difficult to identify the precise point on the radiograph. Okay, the example of bilateral structures are the por uh, the por uh, porion, the gonion, the mastoid, etc. Okay, so whatever is two in number. So the unilateral anatomical landmarks are the ones that can be marked more precisely as compared to the other structures. So, in our options, we have been given firstly the cella. Now, the cella is the constructed point that is present on the medial plane. Okay, so it is defined as the center of the cella tersica. So, this point, this uh, recess that we see here, okay, into which the hypo, uh, in, into which the pituitary gland will be seen. Okay, so this, uh, this area is marked as cella. And this opening is marked as SE, that is the opening of the cella and this point in the center is marked as S. So it is a constructed point, it is not an anatomical point because we are arbitrarily marking the center of this fossa as the cella. Okay, so again it is not a precise uh, marking or it is not a precise position of this structure. Then the other option that was given was the porion. Now the porion is the uh, anthropologic landmark which is the opening of the, the superior border of the external auditory meatus. Now there are two types of porions which can be seen on the lateral cephalogram. There is a machine porion which appears as a radio opaque two circles. Okay, This is the, uh, this is the representation of the ear rods that are placed in the patient's auditory canal while the radiograph is being taken. Okay, so to position the head of the patient, these ear rods are placed and this structure is placed along the uh, recess of the nasion. So these, uh, the impression of these ear rods on the radiograph are the machine porion. Now the machine porion may sometimes obscure the position of the anatomical porion. So the anatomical porion appears as a radiolucent kidney bean shaped structure. Okay, and the superior border of this is considered as the porion.
Now again, the porion is a bilateral structure, so there is going to be some superimposition that is seen. Plus, its vicinity is very close to the mastoid air cells, right? Being a radiolucent structure, sometimes there is a confusion regarding the correct position of the porion. So, what one way of uh, identifying the porion is by taking a measurement or by trying to locate it behind or posterior and superior to the condylar head. Okay, so this is a condylar head. So it is posterior and in a superior position to the condylar head. This is how sometimes we mark the porion when it is not very clearly visible on the lateral cephalogram. Okay, then we come to the next point that is the subspinal or the point A. Now the point A is the deepest structure that is seen along the concavity between the anterior nasal spine and the alveolar process of the maxilla. So here you see from the ANS, there is this concavity that will be going towards the alveolar process of the maxillary incisors. So the deepest point here would be marked as A. Now this again is not a very reliable uh, indicator like the point A is sometimes not very clearly identified on the radiograph because it is going to be... Uh, it is going to be affected by various structures. Also, the positioning of the tooth is going to bring about a change in the point A. So, many uh, authors such as Van der Linden, Jarabak and even Jacobson gave the point A revisited. That is, whenever there is a difficulty in recognizing and positioning the point A, they give various other ways to locate it, such as uh, by plotting it 0.3 mm ahead of the junction between the upper one-third and the lower two-third of the root of the maxillary central incisor. So This is the maxillary central incisor and they have given certain indications where you can f find the point A in relation to it. This is because the point A is a very variable landmark and sometimes it gets obscured uh, on the radiograph, so it is not very clearly demarcated. Okay, what about the nasion? So, nasion is the most anterior point on the frontonasal suture in the mid sagittal plane. Now, the frontonasal suture, so here we see this is the frontal bone. Okay, this is the frontal air sinus here, this is the frontal bone. Okay, it comes down like this, and here the nasal bone starts. Right, so this suture between the nasal bone and the frontal bone is a very uh, clearly demarcated area. So the nasion can be marked very definitely because it is the most anterior point on the suture. So once you have identified the suture because the frontal bone is very prominent on the cephalogram, so is the nasal bone. So once you identify the suture, the most anterior point on the suture is marked as the nasion. So that is a point that is very definitive, it is very clear and it can be the most precisely marked. Okay, so from all of the options that is given here, that is point A, nasion, cella, and porion, the one that can be most precisely marked is the nasion.